All right, this is my progress from when I started powerlifting a little before turning 39 and to where I am today at 49. Failed twice there at 286. Now that is my PR pretty much. So I left a lot of stuff in here for you guys to see and I put in a lot of the numbers so I don't have to talk about them necessarily and you, I can more or less kind of narrate through what was going on here. So you'll see I got the monolift. This is about a year after my first powerlifting meet and I'm putting up some heavy weight. But the problem with the monolift is I don't have anybody to unrack the weight for me at a meet so it wasn't specific to performing really well at a meet. So safety wise, it's great. Puts you in the right spot once you, you get it down where you can extend. But if you really, really want to excel in powerlifting, um, it's not very relatable to how much you can bench. That's my son, Silas. And uh, yep, lots of hats here. Personal trainer, dad, and powerlifting all, all at one. So. The other thing you guys get to get to see is like how lean I have to get to make 132. And uh, it, it's hard guys. It was really hard on my body. Um, and the thing of it is I'm big enough to where there's, there's no way I, I know some guys because they don't understand the whole bodybuilder look. Like you can actually look a lot bigger than you are if you're ultra lean. And I'm 5'3", you know, it, it's after strength training for over 30 years, I obviously can put on a lot of muscle mass and fill out a five foot three frame. You know, I was a farm kid in Iowa and I started weight training very young because I was trying to improve not only in wrestling, but also in um, sport, team sports. That's where I first started and that's probably why I was able to adapt super fast. I even though I was a state champion in Iowa in wrestling and went on to wrestle at Division I for a little bit, I, uh, I didn't start to seventh grade. So a lot of it was because I wanted to play sports and I was a good athlete, but I had to develop my strength. So anyway, that's a quick story on that. You can see a lot of these um, temps where I learned that you shouldn't go for it. You know, I, I'm really hungry to do really well and by this point, Raw Unity, that was my third meet. I was right there to set the all-time record, which I did do, but because they painted the weights and they had issues with saying the stuff was calibrated, it couldn't count for any of the all-time records for, for like, back then it was powerlifting watch was regulating them all. And I drug tested a week before, but they wouldn't count that, which I understand. The problem was right here, I, you can see how I thought I was still going 148, that's how I'm enjoying the bulk right there. Just doing pump up exercises. And shortly after that, you, you'll see that, uh, no, gotta go back down to 132. Got some unfinished business. So there was a meet. So Raw Unity was in January that year. And I had to cut down to 132 one more time. Get super lean. Um, when I would test guys, I didn't know some people will argue, and I have a degree in exercise science, so I did hydrostatic weighing, that's when you weigh under the tank when I was in college. The bod pod is very good, if you, and the guy that would do mine has his master's degree in exercise physiology, and it was at a hospital, so it's very good, and my body fat test levels when I was getting ready for a meet varied in between three and five percent. So you could always argue like, oh my God, that's, that's way too lean, there's no way you were that, but it's, I actually did DEXA scans. The DEXA scans were only 2% higher than my body fat level and I did them within the same hour so I did because I wanted an accurate comparison and I did that for the UPA meet that you'll see eventually you'll notice here sorry guys I'm digressing a little bit but um I had my feet up on the bench I was it's really really hard when you're going for a total to get everything in line and I also I didn't put as much here but I was using the reactive slingshot a lot too for this because I needed to take the pressure off my shoulders from all the low bar squatting. I had my first stem cell um, injections into my sh um, shoulder that had been injured. Um, I played a lot of baseball, 
<laughs> it's just, I just so I had, had issues with my subscap and um, my supraspinatus was actually 85% torn. So I had stem cell injections and today guys, my shoulders, awesome. No surgery, was able to train, but you have some restrictions. That's a lot of pressure on your shoulder. And uh, uh, I also had a lot of pressure on my back from all the deadlifting and stuff because I was going for that total and really trying to crush it, get that 10 time body weight total. Um, these are called YTWs. They're almost an essential for when you're doing all this type of training to keep your, the integrity of your rotator cuff muscles intact and healthy. So you can see, guys, I'm just absolutely shredded. You know, no bodybuilder look, but I'm just walking around with like striations everywhere all the time at this point. So um, that's my buddy Peter. <laughs> He's an ex-Marine and a realtor. Actually, my realtor helped me out with the, the new place that you'll see eventually in the, and probably the, the videos you see in my other videos now in my gym, which is in a pole barn separate from my house. This was in my old house. Um, anyway, he's a big guy. Um, he's lifted with me now and then. I actually trained him in the past. And um, he was willing to give me a lift off so I could, you know, do better at bench, have a little um, squeeze everything out, you know, since I actually... Had a really hard weight cut at Raw Unity. I was bigger, but man, it, it wasn't worth it, guys. I just was cramping like crazy, and it was just three pounds. That's how close it gets at the very end, guys. Three pounds was all the difference. So this time I had to stay just as strong, if not stronger, weighing three pounds less. So he was willing to go all the way down to Dubuque with me. It's about a four-hour trip from where we live. Um, and help me out. And you'll see here in a second, man, it did. I had a really, really good meet, and it was the best meet at 132 I had for bench. It didn't look that way, so that was struggling at 308. That's exactly what I got at Raw Unity. It was 308, it was my best. And man, we just had a good lift off, and sometimes you never know, guys. Like, you have a better lift off, and you just have it right. Watch the speed of this compared to the last one. It's so much faster, and that's another two and a half kilos, so five and a half pounds heavier. And there it was, it's all time. Drug tested on the same day. All right, here it is, guys. It's when I got the temps. A little bit of pictures. I was super pumped, and it's kind of cool to see the reaction of the, the judges. I was, I was super pumped that I hit it. They were, and I, uh, I know I probably jump cut this a little bit on the video, but I just want to let you guys know it's, it's really cool feeling, and it, it felt awesome to hit that, especially when Peter was there. So if it sounds funny on the audio, it's because I. I change this part right here really good so anyway now here we go i am actually uh <laughs> testing stuff out i did 352 with the mono lift i'm building up for 148 i think and i gotta cut this really cut short guys but i basically put on 16 pounds over about six months and was insanely tired and stuff like that and so i actually went to the hospital, the physician's like, you know, I doubt this, but I, you almost sound like you have symptoms of Lyme disease. And I crap you not. At the same time, I was going to see how much muscle I put on in those six months, which I only put on one pound of muscle and I put on like 15 pounds of fat. So I didn't get any stronger. Oh, I got stronger because I'm fat, but at the time, but then I, uh, I didn't really gain anything. And I also found out the same day I had, I tested positive for Lyme disease. So in spite of that, I cut back down by April, so it's nine months later, because a lot of the people were talking smack about in the um, USPA that I could not, you know, under their standards, I wouldn't have broken the all-time record. So this is just the kind of way I am, guys. I'm, a, I'm stubborn, and I don't like being told that I can't do something, you know. I figured I engineered all this other stuff in the past when I'm this old. And part of it is too, I built up a lot of muscle over, you know, to, at 41. So you can see it here, guys. I'm showing you my favorite ancillary exercise for bench. And it shows how truly lean I am. And it also shows how short my torso is. I mean, that's kind of, I do have some weird things about my body. You know, like I have kind of long legs and kind of long arms for my body and like super short torso. My lats go right pretty much into my ass. So um, pause, bench. I knew that I was probably gonna struggle. For whatever reason, I was getting a lot of back cramping. 
in my upper back benching and it you'll see it came uh it happened oh there you go that's that's where i pre-cut from so i wanted to copy that down so you guys see it it's about 138 pounds so i had to lose about seven pounds to make weight and then i recomped up first bench opener um jp price was the, the head ref for that he just said that i i started too soon from like you have to hold it at the top too for uspf so that's the only reason red light me i cleaned up the second one then i i actually cut my last attempt because Kyle Keogh was there helping me out, and we both just decided, it was like, you know, let's not screw up my deadlift um, so that I could set the USPA record, and I did. I smoked it. So um, that was for the open record. They wouldn't, even though I drug tested that day, through them, they would not count it as the drug tested record because I did that at a non drug tested meet, which they had just started a couple months. Actually, they started those right after. I had registered for that meet, so I'm not gonna like cancel my meet and my all this other stuff. I would have had to pay like two hundred dollars. I would all my cancel out my hotel room. I mean, it was just a pain in the ass, guys. I mean, it's this is just for fun for me. I don't get, I don't need to go to nationals and stuff like that. I figure as long as they have world referees like rated at nationals, which they do at all the meets I did, I made sure so that if I did hit records, that it would be good to go because they had the referee there. So when you're doing those meets, they actually have the judges there to make sure that you will um, hit the lifts. All right, showing you a little bit of triceps, upgraded the, the power blocks a little bit, working on my favorite accessory for, uh, for bench there. And this is the new gym. This is uh, a few years down the road. I had uh, retired from powerlifting. I had um, some nerve damage from an old injury that we worked through and I'm doing be much better now. But it, it was really hard to, to make, make the weight, guys. And I, I felt happy with, with what I had accomplished in competitive bodybuilding. Or, sorry, powerlifting. So now I'm just kind of being the pretty lean, but not shredded mid-40-year-old guy. <laughs> Having fun. It's more of a fun thing now. So here, this is my big uh, push to push up the bench. You know, I'm 150 pounds here now, not cutting down to 132 and uh doing crazy stuff like 374 pound reactive <laughs> benches and uh the goal i had set up was like man i wonder if i can get uh the olympic Oli, um which is 352 pounds here it is guys i did it i did it so i cut out a lot of stuff oh here we go so <laughs> just because i'm out of not deadlift and 500 plus pounds all the time and also all the crazy stuff. I tore my bicep tendon playing softball. Swear to God. <laughs> so stupid. And uh, so life, uh, give me another challenge. Let's see if we can come back from this, build it back up. And that's what this, this extra little part here, that's what that is. I'm showing you guys how to rebuild it. So you have to take off some time um, for it to scar down. You can't just start working out right away guys and that's that takes a few months but once it was ready to go I was ready w what you need to do when you can't even move your arm around a lot is I would do a lot of infrared sauna which I have one um, I just invested in it and then I also use red light therapy um, I have a juve the red and infrared light therapy that's the way to go because it was all about getting circulation to that area when I couldn't move it and so sauna infrared light and uh, we don't, I don't need, eventually I'll go into that, guys. You know, I'll do a, a video about my favorite ways to recover. And there, there are some things that, man, I thought would be like woo-woo, voodoo, whatever, like bullshit. And uh, they work great. They work fantastic. It's, it's almost unbelievable. I don't know why somebody wouldn't do that. If you ever thought of looking into red and infrared light therapy, I can tell you for me, it's... I, I can't believe how well it works. It's unreal. It doesn't even seem real. Anyway, I did so much tricep and bicep work coming back from the bicep tendon tear that uh, it's the most I've ever done in my life. And you can see I would do pump it up so crazy. I'm like, Jesus, I'm so vascular right now. It's because I was trying to pump it up to get blood flow in there so I could rebuild it. You know, because I can't have wobbly legs, you know, benching, trying to bench all this weight. But 
man, I was, I was on a mission. I mean, I crushed this right here. And I think I had one of these sets in I, I showed prior to it, and that was just as good. And uh, you see I'm getting closer, getting closer. It's coming back. And here we go, guys. I hope you liked the video. You're going to see what I got up to. But, um, yeah, this is my kind of my journey for benching. So pretty soon I will have all the other videos coming up that kind of follow with. So the, my favorite ancillaries for bench coming right up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like it. If you want to, subscribe. And I will talk to you guys very soon. Peace.